for me an easy be the improv. Comic Strip Live, Showtime's Comedy Club All-Stars from Seattle, Washington. Please give it up! Give it up! Mr. Rollins! Hey, 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 good evening. How's everybody doing? Good. You know, it occurs to me, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, whatever prescription medication Mike Tyson is currently taking <laughs> is not working. <laughs> it's time we up the meds on this brother. <laughs> we got to up the meds immediately. I'm suggesting a Prozac suppository <laughs> the size of an old World War II torpedo for starters. Because Mike is an anger management infomercial just waiting to be taped. <laughs> Keep fighting, not keep biting. <laughs> so, have you ever been in public and looked at somebody and they looked back at you and established eye contact and you realized right away when your eyes met that you had made a huge mistake? <laughs> We lock. Vulcan mind melt style. <laughs> he goes, hi. Hi, 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 hi. That gets my attention. Hi, 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 hi. That freaks me out. So now I'm walking a little faster toward the bathroom door. He's following me with his voice. Hi, 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 hi. I get almost to the bathroom door as if I'm gonna stop. He goes, hi, hi. You black bastard. <laughs> so I never want to hear another Major League Baseball player tell me that he is underpaid. Because <laughs> baseball players make a lot of money, and their job is to hit a ball with a stick. <laughs> if they do this three out of ten times, they are guaranteed superstars in the game. They are Hall of Fame players. If seven out of 10 jokes I told bombed every night, I'd be sweating like Jesse Jackson on the O'Reilly Factor. <laughs> Let me go a little further. I'm gonna switch careers for just a second. I'm Rod Long, forklift driver. I drive a forklift at the Acme Explosives Warehouse. <laughs> Three out of 10 times, I place the load of bombs properly on the shelf. <laughs> But the other seven times, fuck tweets all around the warehouse. Everybody's eyeballs, this big head stand, spread up on the head, running toward any side mark exit. So at the end of the year, think this, I got a $2 million signing bonus, because I only blew up half the warehouse thing. So you know, I don't know what to think, man. We are in spring, uh, back to winter, back to spring, back to winter. I hate fall as a homeowner. I gotta just tell you that right now, man. I spend about two, three days at a time raking leaves in the front and backyard at my house. Now, here's the cold bowl of chili part. There's not a tree on my property. I got a pedicure the other day. My dad actually shamed me into getting a pedicure. He comes by the house, we got hardwood floors. I'm barefoot, I answer the door. Clippy, cloppy, clippy. <laughs> Dad looks down, son, what's up with them toenails? You can run up the side of a tree with them feet. <laughs> my girl comes in the house, he goes, dude, you can put a foot in the water and hook a salmon on the way back. <laughs> so my dad says, get in your car.
car and follow me, I'm going to show you where I get my nails done. Now, as you know, all across America, in every major city, the Vietnamese have come back. After they won the war, they have now moved here to do our nails. Thank you, non -vets. Anyway, I go smack dab in the middle of the new Ho Chi Minh City. It says on the reader board, nails 15, pedicure 20. I have on sandals, no socks. I get back in the car and I put on a pair of socks. Then I slip my sandals on. Because I didn't want my man inside to see the task at hand too soon. <laughs> I walk in, here's a little bit of Ah, uh, what up, can I help you all? I say, yeah, man, I'd like a pedicure. Okay, sit right there, remove your sandal and your socks, please. So I sit on the stool, I kick off that right sandal. He quickly sits down on the stool opposite me and starts studying the brother as I'm taking off that right sock. Now, because I know he's watching, healing that right sock back real slow and suggestively like a stripper would. <laughs> down to where I got the front part of the sock tucked under. It's also tucked under on the other foot. Why? To hide the fact I got two big holes in the front of my sock. Why is there two big holes in the front of my socks? Duh, that's why I'm there to see my man. I got three big hawk claw looking toenails on each foot. So now I pull the right sock off. He sees my foot. His eyes rounded out. He buckwheated right there in top of Where you grow a toenail like this? Jurassic Park? What do you need? I said, man, I told you I need a pedicure. No kidding, you need pedicure. He goes to the back, it's a Seahawk helmet, welding goggles. <laughs> Comes back, he's trimming my toenails, toenail strap that was flying over his head. He did an incredible job. I tipped him $3 Canadian. <laughs> well, I finally saw that movie Christine, the Stephen King film on the Sci-Fi channel. It's about the car that's possessed. I'm watching this movie thinking, why don't you stop putting gas in this crazy bitch? <laughs> So, uh, in my travels, ladies and gentlemen, I, I get to Alaska once in a while. I was just in Sitka, Alaska, where I was a judge in the Great Alaskan Full Set of Teeth Contest. <laughs> and once again, there are no winners to report. <laughs> but all that aside, Alaska's never a place you want to go and take a chihuahua dog. <laughs> Why? Bald eagles love chihuahuas in Alaska. <laughs> you show up in Alaska with a chihuahua dog, but bald eagles about two miles away, perched on top of a tall tree, casually surveying the whole situation as you, the wife, and the dog disembarked from the Winnebago. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Chihuahua? You don't get Mexican food up here too often. <laughs> Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> Smoke in Alaska, man. I can dig it if you smoke. But the tobacco industry is under fire. And they should be under fire because for years the lobbyists from the tobacco industry have stood straight faced in front of members of Congress. <laughs> Smokers hate that joke, man. <laughs> Yes, it is. Very dark, but very funny. <laughs> so I'm on the island of Kodiak, Alaska, and I had gone from actually the hottest place I've been in my life, which was Phoenix, Arizona. 122 degrees, which scared me because I went to Catholic schools. I know for a fact it's 105 in hell. <laughs> you can tell people driving without air conditioning. Guy pulls up next to me, he's steering with these kitchen pothole divisions. <laughs> spelling help on the window. <laughs> I get on the water slide because I'm trying to cool off. My buddy tells me I ride. When you take off on a water slide, the key is always you arch your back, you put your butt way up in the air when you take off. I do this, immediately I'm fired out of a cannon. Boom! <laughs> down the chute, I'm in a whole nother gear in about 10 seconds. Now, as I head into the first wide sweeping bank turn, I'm trying desperately to be cool, but I'm feeling myself coming up on a buck quick pretty quick. <laughs> series of high, wide, banking turns. Now I'm feeling like a member of the Jamaican Bob's Lead team. 
I'm trying to get my equilibrium together. I look up at one point, my butt is next to me on the wall. <laughs> my butt's trying to apply the brakes. I'm out of this, I'm in a huge loop. I'm upside down now, water's brushing out my nose, and there's a scratching sound. Why, my toenails are trying to grab something. <laughs> I head into the final turn, there's this big woman stuck. <laughs> water damn up behind the back, looks like Grand Coolie Dam wearing a red one piece bathing suit. I run into this woman, I'm on the Jerry Springer show tomorrow, actually. She hits the water just before I knew I hit it, my butt hydroplanes across the pool. Bam! 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 On the side looking around. <coughs> I lived. As soon as I pulled my swimming trunks and way out of my crack, I'm riding that again. My trunks is boldly gone when no man has ever gone before. I pulled my, I went, whoa, that's my prostate gland. Front appreciates the prostate reference. <laughs> Young fella right there, a little confused by the prostate reference. I gotta get out of here before I do. I wanna tell you, hey, we Kathy Sorbo, incredible, incredible comedian. We're gonna see Kathy here in just a second. I can't wait to see her myself. We started out in the day many years ago, and we still love this, which is why we are here for you. Because we dig this and we dig you, and that you still dig being made to laugh, and not at home on your couch watching CNN or MSNBC or Tanya Harding, whooping Paula Jones. <laughs> so I'm in Kodiak, man, and the guy I'm staying with up there's got a dog, the lab. He's got a lab. The lab is a frisbee freak. So I'm trying to bond with the dog. I'm standing out in the front yard. The ocean's behind us. I'm tossing the frisbee. Frisbee, not a black sport. <laughs> go see Shaq and Kobe at the Staples Center warming up. Hey, big fella, go along. Watch the tone now. So I'm trying to bond with the dog. About five of these shots, suddenly the frisbee lands on the roof of the house next door, in the snow. I go explain to the storm, the guy I'm staying with, what happened. He said, I don't worry about it. There's a meltdown. I'll get the ladder. Just don't worry about it. So I go to do my show that night. I come back. Stormy's dog is still next door, looking for the frisbee. Has dug a track around the house next door, looking for the frisbee. Sees me get out of the van, says, Hoo. I found out later through my friend who speaks dog. <laughs> what he was saying was, hey, did the same <laughs> 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 Thank you very much.